Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comedian, host of Bachelor at Recap, a guy's review. It's your boy, Power Recapper over here, Linen Shirt Dave, hashtag LSD, coming to you live from the peninsula in Belize. We got another story here. Believe it or not, I don't know, this might constitute as breaking news. So let's jump right into it. Ladies and gentlemen, breaking news today... There is a virgin from The Bachelor named Mike Planeta, a.k.a. Mike Placenta, and he is out here. Listen, I'm not here to virgin shame, okay? I am not here to virgin shame, all right? But we're going to play what he has to say. Uh, there's, uh, you know, a lot of people have been uh, uh, sending me a few different clips here, so let me just come over to it in the picture in picture. So page six, page six made a story out of this. Breaking news, Bachelorette Virgin Mike Planeta admits he slipped up and had oral sex. Okay, folks, I guess we're going there. I guess we're going there. And, you know, whenever I see something like this, I like to immediately dip into the comment section. You ever do that? You ever just see some, like, crazy post or some crazy photo and you go, let me see if other people are thinking the same thing I'm thinking. So uh, we get slipped up uh, in quotes. Come on, Mike, you dirty dog. Uh, slutty Puffin said, slipped in. Well, there you go, folks. Does Mike not understand that there are certain things he is allowed to keep to himself, not just his virginity? I thought it said Mike Placenta. Okay, so a lot of things. Why is this news? Why am I here? What are we even doing? By the way, I wanted to shout everyone out for all the advice I got in the comment section of my last video about my sunburned face. I didn't know we had so many dermatologists out there giving me their advice. I appreciate you guys so much. Listen, I shot those videos yesterday, so I've had the night to uh, to relax. I had aloe vera. I know the sun goes through the clouds. Your boy was out there. I had a daiquiri. I thought I was above the law. We all think we're above the law once in a while. And then God shines down some rays of sunlight onto our backs and gives us throbbing moles. That's right, folks. TMI. Did I know I didn't have to share that with you? <laughs> anyway, so let's get right into it. Thank you guys for all the advice. I drank a lot of water, and I put on some aloe vera. And uh, and we're kicking it. We're about halfway through the uh, vacation here, so there'll be a few more days of uh, linen shirt, Dave. Get it while you can. Enjoy it while it's hot. And also, this video, not sponsored by Coca-Cola, but uh, I was so thirsty, I had one of the in-room beverages and people say to me dave uh you know they, they've been looking at my um my uh, candy over here they go why when are you gonna eat all that candy and i was like are you kidding me this is like a thousand dollars this is what they tempt you with you can't eat that you gotta ride your bike like a man to the local uh grocery store and get some uh fried plantain chips or something all right let's get back into it so it's actually a very fascinating story as you guys know i i enjoy talking about this i was raised catholic i'm pretty um i'm pretty secure with my spirituality now i'm not saying i'm catholic i'm not saying i'm not catholic i am me i am a stand-up comedian i don't have a boss i don't like being told what to do so for all the people that slide in my dm saying don't say bump to your harrisons it's disgraceful don't do this don't do that stop telling me what to do you either ride in my school bus or you get off at the next exit, okay? And look, I, I, I don't mind some, you know, honest feedback and honest criticisms and all that, but, you know, think twice before you slide into people's DMs because we're going to get into this story. But you know what? Before I get into this purity story, what a perfect chance to jump into this. How disgusting. Shame on you. Not you people. You guys are fine. But shame on you, the people that go out of their way to write these things about Hunter. He compiled all this, which, you know, in some ways might be psychotic. Oh, I got to go back here. It might be psychotic to, to compile all of your hate. Oh, the story's no longer available. Did you guys get to see it? It was essentially just a lot of hateful messages that Hunter got. And look, the, the thing is, you know, like... At some point, you get enough fame where you decide, I'm not going to air out all the nasty. But, you know, he, it's still, it's new fame to him. So for him to get these messages, and, you know, it's one thing to make light of it. I do the same thing. I make light of the negative. People calling him huddy, uh, ugly. People saying he looked like some sort of predator. This thing is like, this is somebody's son. This is somebody's dad. Like, what are we doing? You know, the anonymity. I would love to host a show. Let me know what you guys think about this. Called Trolled. 
I would love to host a show where we take what seems like very sort of like minuscule trolling offenses where like someone calls somebody an ugly piece of crap or whatever and we go to their home and we knock on their door like Chris Hansen style. Chris Hansen, not Harrison. Bump your Hansons and that uh, um bop, um bop your Hansons. Wow, we're really killing it today. If you're like me from the 90s, you know how to um bop your Hansons. Um bop, bop, da, um. Giddy down, down. Okay, anyway, folks. So imagine you go, you knock on someone's door and you go, did you text this? Did you tweet this about this guy right here? And you bring Hunter along. And that person has to come face to face with the fact that they said that to Hunter. Now, on the surface, you're not going to win every war. You're not going to change every troll and this and that. But it's it'd be a fun show to just watch people backpedal real quickly and see how, see how when the camera's turned on them, how they act. Kind of like cops, but for trolls. What do you guys think? Should I host a show? Uh, kind of like cops, but for trolls. Anyway, all right, let's get back into it. Uh, so here it is, the page six article. Uh, the page six article, here we have it here. Now, Mike went on Instagram Live, because this is the new thing to do, I guess, is where everyone spills their soul on Instagram Live. Which, by the way, the amount of love I got from Courtney with a Q's Instagram video just goes to show how much love is actually out there. Now, trigger warning very quickly about suicide. I have used this term multiple times in the past called, um, oh, uh, no, thank you. Room service. Um, I think they were trying to clean the room. Anyway, um, I'm not going to edit there. You guys get to see the real life, uh, Dave Neal with the room. Now the room's going to be dirty because we're making, hold on a second. Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Thanks. Golly. Because, I mean, if I have to, if I have, <laughs> housekeeping, listen, if I have to edit this, it's going to add about an hour onto my work day today. And uh, let Lin sure Dave just doesn't have the time. So anyway, thank you for bearing with me here. Um, so, yeah, so he makes this story. So uh, just quickly to wrap up the Courtney with a Q part. Um, so Courtney with a Q, so we talked about um, uh, uh, committing suicide and, and the idea being, I, and multiple people have messaged me about this. And I've learned this already, but it's one of those just word association things you have to relearn. Committed is a word that refers to when suicide was illegal and seen as some heinous crime, where it really is a lot more complicated and layered that and layered than that. So I do apologize, even though I think we all know everyone was so kind in explaining it to me. And we all know my intention wasn't to hurt anybody. Um, but uh, uh, trying to remove the term committed from that conversation. So anyway, let's go into this and let's play what uh, Mikey said here. Here's a quick clip and then we'll show you the New York Post article. I'm a big believer that when you love something, it's your deepest love in your life. You should always share it. You can't stop talking about something that you love, right? That to me is Jesus. He has captured my heart at my first earliest memory and and he has been my layer of protection that has allowed me to take a step back and actually act the way um, that I should act because I am such a naturally selfish human, naturally rotten human that like I needed um, structure, I needed discipline, I needed that. You know, I'm sure all of you are such better humans naturally than I am. Um, I just needed guidance. And I had that from my family, obviously, but my family, that was based off of our faith. And, and um, you know, I was somebody that, that needed that. And I needed to learn how to treat a woman the right way. I needed to learn um, how to treat others the right way. I needed to learn self-control. I needed to learn all these things. Um, and that stems from, from him. All right, so listen, I want to unpack this, but first... I know that I know this is this is less about Mikey and more about purity culture in general. Um, where do we even begin with this all? Now, like I said, I I don't consider myself atheist. I don't consider myself religion hating. Um, I'm more spiritual, if anything. Uh, but and I do believe there's a lot of good that comes from religion and collective uh, prayer and um, and a lot of the uh, you know just basic good deeds you get from the Ten Commandments. Don't covet your neighbor's wife. You can check, you know, if you're if you're mowing the lawn and she's weed whacking and you look, you know, but don't covet her, you know, but, you know, glance. That's what it says. Don't cover your neighbor's wife, but glance. That's OK, too. All right. Anyway, so we cleared that up. <laughs> oh, boy. 
All right, so I know you guys are nuanced like me, and there's a lot to um, sort of unpack here. But the whole idea like, oh, I'm a wretched soul, I'm a piece of crap, oh, I'm an idiot. I'm sure you guys are better than me, but I am so bad, God's my shield. It's like, first of all, no. You are you. We are, okay, well, listen, I'm not going to, just like, I'm not going to tell people how to think. I believe we are all a collective, you know, the whole Wayne Dyer universe, uni verse one song, we're all notes to the greater song, right? So, um, you know, there are cancers within the humanity. There is a lot of bad happening along along the way, a lot of fear, a lot of division, but there, there's a lot of good too. There's a lot of vicarious healing where we uh, wish well on each other. We help each other out. Like I said the other day with, I believe the Cor the Courtney video, there's plenty of times where we lift each other up when when we may be down in this and that, but the idea that that like uh, we're all we're all flawed humans, like yeah, we're all every, okay. Sure, everyone's flawed. Everyone has good and love, and everyone has hate and fear within them. So we all have that thing. But to say like to say that you're a virgin because like you wanted to respect women or this or that, it it just gets a little complicated because if you're a consenting adult and you wanna have sex and your partner wants to have sex, you 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 don't need, like, waiting for marriage. Like, it's, it's so semantic to me that it's like, what are you even doing? Like, what's, wh what, who's, who are you sacrificing this for? Now, look, I, um, you know, I, I'm in Belize right now. I'm, I'm at a lot of the Mayan ruins where they literally decapitate people and sacrifice, or they did, of course, sacrifice people and had all these, like, sacrifices to the sun gods, and, like, they really believed they were doing the right thing. To make it rain, you needed to kill a couple of virgins, and you, you, were, you were the chosen one, the minions and all that, and it's like, look, I don't know, like, good, like, sacrifice can be good, like, you sacrifice, you know, like, or, or you, you abstain from food for, like, you fast, you know, this and that, and then it, it, it reminds you that you're human, yeah, no, so I understand all of that, but at the same time, I, I reject a lot of the logic that goes into like, I'm no good, he is my savior, I am I, I must I am shielded by the great Lord. It's like I just I just really believe more that the Lord's within all or we are all part of a God. We are all part of a larger organism and we kind of all flock together or apart and uh, we succeed together or we fail apart. I don't know. So let's just go back to the rest of uh, what they said here in page six. I just, you know, it's so complicated, but um, he says, I'm not some perfect little, like, you know, golden, uh, oh, sorry. I'm not some perfect little, like, you know, golden boy. Dude, I am very flawed human being. Like, I am extremely flawed while discussing his decision to abstain from sex until marriage. And I've said this. I've talked with Bachelorette Katie Thurston about this. I'm very open about this. I may not have had, like, sex, sex, but I've slipped up and I've had oral sex. Why is that slipping up? Like what's, I, I guess I would want to know what's the logic of your sacrifice in the first place. For me, that was one of the moments where like the two times I did slip up and do those things, those were things that taught me actually the significance of why I actually was putting sex on such a pedestal. Katie uh, asked Mike from the competition on Monday's episode, she describes herself as sex positive. You know, th this whole sex positive thing, it's like, it's almost like people should describe themselves as sex negative or just normal because Katie Thurston, while I understand the term is sex positive, she's just normal. She's a normal human. There's nothing crazy sexual about her. She's just normal. Uh, but we live in such a Puritan culture that that's seen as some like crazy surprise. Mike Planeta, a gym owner from California, acknowledged on the podcast he understands being a virgin who also identifies as an extremely sexual person may be confusing to many fans. I know this is a really weird thing to say because I'm waiting till marriage. I'm an extremely sexual dude. It's just I have to kind of confine that in ways. Like for me, until I get married, until it's like in the right context. When people think of somebody waiting, right, they think they're a prude or they're not interested in sex or they don't want to have those things. No. I have all these urges, probably like probably times 10, right? These are urges that I fight every single day, but it's not about me. But then who's it about? Like what, what's the, and again, I'm not, okay, let's, let's put it this way. I'm not here to change anybody's minds. I just think if someone decides they don't want to have sex, fine. But what about all the people that, that the subliminal or the imprinting on them really isn't their decision? You know, you say like, oh, I've been a uh, spiritual since, you know, before I can remember. It's like, was that you being spiritual or, or is that like some sort of, you know, or, or is re religion imprinted on someone who doesn't have their brain made up? 
So you go with your limiting belief and believe that your whole life. I'm not saying relig- I'm not saying God doesn't exist or this or that. I'm just saying the purity culture we talk about. I made a bunch of videos about this with Colton Underwood season, and um, of course we then figured out he was gay, but there was still purity culture there. Um, but we talk about like what? Who are you? Why? Do, like to have these thoughts of like he said he slipped up twice and had oral sex. So what's going, what kind of pain is going through his body and his mind and his soul after he has oral sex, you know, gets blown or goes down on somebody? Like, he says, sex is a bonding thing. It's a connection thing. It can mask a lot of issues if you're not communicating and talking about a lot of these things. I just want to make it perfectly clear how naturally selfish of a human I am outside of my faith. And that's why I cling so hard to it. So if sex is a bonding thing, so is hugging. So is eye contact. I mean, you release oxytocin when you make eye contact. You ever make eye contact with, especially with your mask, you ever have your mask on and you make eye contact? You're like, I think, I think we need a cigarette break out there. Point being is where do you draw the line? You know, where do you draw the line? And um, about what's like, what like uh, an addiction versus a normal loving thing. Like sex is a beautiful thing. If you have sex with someone, especially if you love them, but also if you have a one night stand or some positive connection, you can like fall in love with someone for the night. You can have this uh, amazing, passionate night somewhere. And that's, and that's the end of it. And you both, if you both got what you wanted out of it and you don't feel used and you both feel love, then you share that love and you, you operate at a higher frequency. So anyway, uh, my, I was actually sent this, uh, talk purity to me. It's going to follow. It's a, um, Unlearning the shame that purity culture taught us. No duct tape or free milk metaphors allowed. If you want to support my work, see my link tree. So let's just check out this one uh, uh, part of it right here about Mikey. And again, you know, I, I do apologize. It's such a nuanced topic and very hard to talk about. And here I am, you know, in Belize. It's kind of like, you know, I'm not trying to cut corners here. I'm just trying to um, answer any um, dissenting opinions before it gets to the comment section. So I'm here to say, look, I'm not saying Mikey's a bad guy or people that wait till marriage are bad people, but you have to like, you have to do a lot of work as to why you're doing that. I'm pointing at you, who are you? You have to do a lot of work as to why you're doing that. Is it for your own body and your body autonomy and this and that? Or is it because someone told you that that man would get angry at you if you, uh, if you bump Harrison's before you're uh, married, before you put a ring and sign a contract, you know? What is marriage and all that? So, wow, it's almost like purity culture is a ridiculous standard that only breeds shame and a fear of being honest. The token born-again virgin on the current season of The Bachelorette had oral sex and feels guilty about it? I'm shocked. Also, I would venture a guess that his perception that he is an extremely sexual dude has more to do with having sexual desires that he isn't allowed to express than a higher-than-average libido. So basically what they're saying is, you gotta just bump the hairy. You know, you gotta uh, nick the glazer. You know what I mean? Date card pod says, OMG, we can't wait to record our bonus app with you. So, uh, I, yeah, maybe I got to have this person on and talk purity culture. Jesus Christ, dude, it pains me when folks think of their sexual expression or activities as a slip up. Par for the course with this dude. Not to mention his comment about he thought his outfit made him look like a drug lord. Can we talk also about how purity culture lets men slip up and calls women dangerous whores for the same thing? I read his name as Mike Placenta. We got that twice. Um, Daniel says, to, or Danielle says, to see how awkward and uncomfortable he was just cuddling with her made me so freaking sad. So you look at a guy and you see a good looking guy. And again, this is not to shame or make fun of Mikey at all. He's kind of, this is why we watch The Bachelorette, The Bachelor, Bachelor in Paradise, because we see people and we get to use their stories as the sort of, as the talking point and the common denominator for social and human condition, right? So we look at this and we go, Man, you can you can be a good looking guy. You can you can have it all. You can have all these things. But if you don't, you know, you can still be sort of uh, slowed down in certain parts of your way of thinking. And I'm not saying that his way of thinking is wrong. I'm just saying I I don't see the logic of why he f- why he feels the need to save himself. And and I and again, I'm just to be utterly redundant. I understand everyone can do what they want with their bodies as long as they're not hurting other people and it's legal and all that jazz. All that jazz. But, you know, to think that somebody might be restricting urges or whatever because it's it's like, you know, 
what's a good example? You know, different religions and different social circles. Like we have different ethics and different things we're allowed to eat and not eat. And we put these restrictions on our bodies. And I understand and in, 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 in respectfully so, so, you know, I, I understand some of them. But I look at this as somebody who, you know, growing up in Catholic, you know, CCD, right? Uh, Sunday school, you know, you know, the priest telling you not to, you know, masturbate. And then you've got like the, the you know, just these purity cultures. We've talked about it all the time with this, with Colton with it, with, we talked about purity culture where the fathers do the, the purity culture, the purity ball with their daughters, their daughters are 14, 15. They sign a contract saying they're not going to have sex till marriage. They're not Adele's. They don't know what they're doing. So we instill these thoughts and beliefs on people yeah, like I love AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't have an alcohol problem, Diet Coke problem, Coca-Cola problem for sure. But for the people that do, they don't promote AA. They say, you know what? We don't promote it. People will ask us why we're doing better and we'll tell them. But you don't promote it to others. And I'm not saying Mikey's doing that. I'm not saying he's promoting his religion to others. But even by sharing his thoughts, which I appreciate him doing, you get to see the flaws in all the different logic. You get to see the flaws of like when he says slip up in the problematic terms where you go, what if there's like a 17, what if there's an 18 year old uh, a woman who, who um, you know, ends up, uh, you know, having a passionate evening with someone and has an, like another consenting adult. And then the next day she feels like she's slipped up. I mean, people literally do, do harmful things to themselves because of the shame they feel thinking there's something wrong with them for having these urges. And in plenty of cultures and in plenty of history books, uh, not this current religion, there's an embrace that happens and a willingness to, um, to uh, you know, embrace your sexuality. So we say it's sex positive, like it's some taboo thing, but it's like, guys, it's 2021. There's no sex positive. There's just sex negative. And I think by thinking you slipped up because you had oral sex and using those terms, I consider that sex negative. I'd love to know what you guys think. If you've listened this far, send me a voicemail. Um, I'm going to be opening the voicemail lines up for tomorrow. So if you want, let me pull the number up. Hold on one second. There it is. And if you want, you can send me a voicemail. Play your voicemails. Let me know what you guys think about this. Is it um, is it kind of dangerous? Uh, you know, well, you know what? Tell me what you think about the story of Mikey slipping up and all that goes into that. And let me know if um, if I'm being too harsh on him. Or, or what? But, uh, oh, Tasha's here. Oh, Tasha's in your bikini. She's got a sunburn. Did you put aloe on? All right, I'm just, uh, I'm wrapping up here. All right, folks. Well, let me know what you guys, Tasha, anything you want to say about purity culture with this situation? Nah. She goes, nah. She grew up in Kentucky. She knows a thing or two about purity balls. Uh, anyway. All right, folks. Let me know what you think. Talk to you later. Bye now. Bye now. Bye now.